So I'm not the kind of person that likes to experiment with a lot of camera gear or focal lengths or different types of film stocks or black or white in color. Um, if you've been around this channel for a little bit, you know that I basically carry around the same kit everywhere I go. It's Leica M6, Summicron 28, Portra, either 800 or 400. And I like it that way. I like to know what I'm going to get. I like to know what my photos are going to look like. And maybe you're wondering why I decided to, to switch for a whole month. And um, even if you're not asking, I'm going to tell you. The answer is pretty simple. The company Seven Artisans, they sent me a lens. They sent me their, their newest version of their, their 35 millimeter lens F2. I think it's the second version, completely free, but they wanted me to do a video on it. Now they didn't say what I could or couldn't say or give me a script about it. They literally just sent me the lens and said, here's the lens, make a video about it and you can keep it. Um, so why not? So this is that video. <laughs> and I'm by no means a gear reviewer. If you want to get super technical about the specs of this lens, that's not gonna happen here. There's some good videos. I've linked them in the description below. Um, they do a good job of explaining the, the technical abilities of this lens. I'm not that guy. So now they sent me this lens back in October. And at the time of filming this, it's February. So that's four months ago. The reason I took so long to make this video, and you'll see this if you click on the other gear review videos about this lens, is that you have to calibrate it. And that's really hard to do when you have a film camera or a film Leica. It takes a lot of trial and error, and that's just simply not possible on a film camera. You have to take, take the photo, develop the film, see where you missed, make the adjustment, take another photo, develop the film, make another adjustment until you get it right. I will say, once you do get it right, this lens takes pretty damn good photos. Another reason why this took kind of a while is, I, like I said before, I'm not really the type to experiment. And with the holidays coming up, one, I wanted that wider 28. If you've ever been in New York City during the holidays, you know it gets really busy and I wanted to pack as much into a frame as possible. So going more narrow or more tele telephoto just didn't make sense at the time. Uh, so I wanted to keep shooting with the 28 until kind of things died down. Um, and, you know, January is kind of that perfect time to do that because things really come to a screeching halt uh, once the holidays are over. And one more reason that I kind of wanted to switch to a 35 uh, in January is simply because, like I just said, things are slower. So the streets are a little bit emptier. Uh, there's much less going on. So getting closer is a little bit harder. So using a 35 gets you a little bit closer. Makes sense. Yeah, I've had this lens on my camera for the entire month, except for one day. The only day I took it off was for the first day of Lunar New Year. Uh, but other than that, it's been this month, everywhere I go, taking my daughter to museums, going to restaurants, at home, out doing street work, uh, hanging out with friends. It's all been this lens, so I spent a lot of time with it. What was really funny is every time I posted this story on Instagram, everybody's like, what is that lens? What is that lens? Oh shit, you're shooting with the 35? What 35 is that? And you know, here it is, 35, seven artisans. I did cover this logo with some gaffer's tape. It's like a really red kind of in your face logo that I wanted to cover. Um, otherwise, like the side of the lens, this lens looks really well built. Uh, it's got the focus tab, uh, which kind of made using it familiar. Not the prettiest from the front, but Maybe you like that kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter to you. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to me that much. But you know, it definitely doesn't look as pretty as like a Summicron or or an Elmerit. But that's just looks. So one thing that I had to get used to was that the focus ring on this lens it's a little bit tighter than I'm used to. So with the Summicron 28, it's so smooth that I can quickly snap to minimum focus distance and snap to infinity in like just the flick of a finger. This one takes a little bit of effort, but that could be just because it's brand new and I haven't worked it in yet. Um, I will say that towards the end of the month, I got used to the stiffness of it and it felt more natural. So that's probably just a product of me not being used to the lens and not using it as much or as long as I use to my other lens. But I mean, you know, use, using it, if you use the Leica lens or, you know, are used to the focus tab, pretty good like you'll get used to it and um 
I just want to shout out Jelton Labs for processing and scanning all of the photos that you guys see in this video. At the time of recording this video, they've now planted over a thousand trees. So what they do is with every order that's placed, they plant a tree. So go plant a tree and place an order. Hit the link in the description. Okay, I'll stop doing that. Another thing that I had to get used to, and this is just 35 versus 28, is the, the ranges for zone focusing are are different it's a little bit tighter so when i'm at f16 usually on 28 it basically covers the entire range uh, so everything is in focus here it's a little bit tighter uh, this lens tells me that if i'm at f16 and you're five feet away from me the focal range will be about four feet to nine feet and that's more similar to like f8 or f11 on a 28 so there there was some kind of getting used to when i was zone focusing i missed a couple shots but just like the stiffness of the focus ring but that's just another thing that i get used to switching from a 28 to a 35. and i know it's not that big of a difference i know that like the frame is like you know this is like a 28 and then this is like a 35. i don't know what the math is maybe somebody can put the math down in the comments but it feels like a 20 percent difference between the frame size it's not that much um and i don't frame things up meticulously like other people do. Uh, I'm more of a snap and go in the moment, run and gun type photographer. So um, the difference in that aspect, it wasn't that big anyways. There were a couple moments where I couldn't really back up and get the frame I wanted. So in those instances, I could kind of wish I had a 28 on, um, but it wasn't like a groundbreaking photo. So I'm okay with kind of with what I got. There was maybe one moment where I wasn't necessarily trying to frame a scene, but something was happening in front of me and I couldn't quite fit all of the the subjects into the frame. But again, not like a groundbreaking photo, but something that I kind of wish I just was, was able to fit more into it. All right, let's get into some comparisons. Everybody loves lens comparison shots, don't they? Let's get into it. Uh, I was able to compare this lens against three different Leica lenses. Uh, the first one here is Scotty's lens. Here's a beautiful photo of Scotty. So this photo was taken with the seven artisans lens. Uh, I believe it was like F4 of Scotty, wide open. I focused on his eye. And then this photo is the same lighting conditions of Scotty using his lens, which is the Summicron 35 V4, which if you Google it, it has been dubbed the king of bokeh. But yeah, here's the comparisons. There's not much differences by my eye. You make judgments for yourself. The next lens, here's a photo of my dog using the seven artisans lens. Uh, and, then, and then here's a photo of my dog in the same lighting conditions on the same bed using the newer Summicron uh, a spherical lens. This is the newest version. I think it was purchased in 2019. Yeah, I mean, honestly, between these two, they're, they're pretty damn close too. So, you know, interpret that for yourself. And then lastly, here is Conway. Conway also has a 35 Leica lens. But Conway has the Summa Lux, which is one tier above the Summicron. So here is a photo of Conway with the Seven Artisans lens. And here's a photo of Conway with the Summa Lux, his Summa Lux. Um, it's definitely sharper, but if you look back to the to the photo I took with the Seven Artisans, it looks like I missed focus, but I don't know how I missed focus. The, the eye looks pretty soft here. The zipper on Conway here is pretty sharp. So you can compare the sharpness there. Comparing the zippers, which are both in focus here, they're still both pretty sharp. The Sumo Lux is definitely way clearer in this instance. So if you got a 6K to drop on a lens, then you'll definitely get a clearer image. If you want to make a decision based on that, go right ahead. Otherwise, you should probably do some more research. Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been wanting to shoot 35 for a while. I think this was just kind of the perfect storm for me to, to try it for a whole month. Uh, considering that I got I got the lens for it, things were slow. I wasn't really missing out on anything too important with putting the lens and experimenting. Um, and you know, if you want a recommendation on this lens, I would say if you have the ability to calibrate it using a digital Leica or maybe your local camera shop or a camera shop you know calibrates it for a relatively cheap price, and you spend all your money on your Leica body, then I'd say go for it. It's it's pretty sharp. As you can see from the photos of this of this video, did the job pretty well. Uh, but yeah, go watch the other videos if you want a full review. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, got some things coming up. 
some more videos hoping to crank stuff out at a faster pace so don't miss out smash smash that thumbs up button or what, like button they call it like button Sm smash that like button and leave a leave a comment below now when they see us in the streets all they want to do is take